board. It's a May 6 uh, call to order at 637 at Dave Pierce maintain timepieces working correctly. Um, at this time, first order of business uh, is turning the meeting over to the town administrator who shall uh, proceed with the board reorganiz reorganization following 2019 elections. Sherry, it's all yours. Okay, I will entertain nominations for chair. I'd like to nominate Scott Bergeron's chair. Uh, second. I make a nomination. We close the uh, nomination. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Vote. All those in favor of Scott Bergeron as chairs, please say, say aye. 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 Three zero. zero. Okay. And Scott's the chair. He's got it. All right. Um, at this time, I'll entertain a motion uh, for vice chair for the Board of Selectmen for 2019. I'm sorry, for this election cycle. <laughs> we play in the middle of the year. That's true. Make a motion of Dave Pierce as vice chair. <clears throat> Second. Nomination closed. Second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 All those in favor, Dave Pierce is <clears throat> vice chair, signify <clears throat> by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Um, entertain motions for clerk for the Board of Selectmen for the elections for this <coughs> election cycle. Uh, I'd like to nominate Tom. Second. Make a nomination of uh, nomination that we close the nominations. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Tom. Congratulations, Tom. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this this being uh, meeting with your agenda, if you're going to run it, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, I know. All right, all right, Scotty, you're set. You want to run the meeting? Yeah, it's a short one. Okay. <laughs> well, it could be. <laughs> it could be. Yeah, I know. The, that's the short ones here. I get. Yeah. All right. So it could be. If, if if that's if that's the case, <clears throat> I defer to I defer to Tom after having gone through last year as chair historically. Carry that agenda forward with the with the residing chair, but in this Dude, case, here, Scott. that's okay. There's nothing. I, you, I know you love poll hearings. Poll hearings. We just, we just <laughs> did, did, you want to start the first? All right. poll. This is a good way to start. There you go. So and you got a guy with Eversource in the audience. Second, yeah, my my other Eversource person quit. Jerry but I just moved on. No, Jerry's Jerry's is yeah, Jerry retired. 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 Yeah. Yeah, he's gone. Okay, he was a nice guy. <clears throat> yeah. Now they send us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so first, the second order of business tonight, we got a poll hearing. Uh, this is a uh, combination of resource and Verizon petition. And uh, Nick, if, if you wouldn't mind uh, coming uh, like one row or two rows closer so we can uh, get the lay of the land. And maybe you could answer the first order of question. Why is it a Verizon petition as well? Okay. So my name is Nick Krieger with Eversource. Um, so first question for why is it a Verizon poll? If we're setting a poll in the town taking and Verizon's wire is going to be touching the pole, they have to attach. Okay. Um, no new Verizon equipment to my knowledge, yep. but we just tell them, hey, we're setting a pole in the town taking and your wire is going to be touching it, attached so it's not a safety violation. Got it. Um, That's the logic behind it being a joint petition yeah. as opposed to simply uh, an Eversource petition. Correct. Got it. So the, the use here is effectively what and uh, where are we landing the <clears throat> pole, Nick? So looking at their sketch, so they gave us some house numbers, some property property lines. We're setting a new pole 18 feet away from existing pole uh, on Plumtree Road in front of property 466 Hadley Road, which is that, um, it's a farmland right now. And then across the street is 304 Plumtree and 296 Plumtree. And where these regulators are gonna go, there's a, like I said, a massive tree line. So you can't see them from any houses. So I think they picked a good spot, or best of spot they could on plum tree for this and it's going to be a mid-span pole next to pole 28 over six so as we look at this for you snick there's no there's no guying or bracing this is 18 feet away from an existing pole and 184 feet <coughs> from another pole headed probably west it looks like correct and the use of this pole is it feeding a space is it new services what is it so this pole will be will capture the other side of a regulator platform so we can install three regulators and Got it. those are just going to be to kind of clean out the voltage keep the, flicker and the lights down yeah uh, all 
inside the town way, and this is a poll hearing except for the public. So if there's any abutters in, in the room, any questions for any of the abutters, that's an important part before the board asks questions. And, and uh, not hearing anything from any of the abutters, as you said, Nick, there's a farm on 466, but there also looks like there are lots on 282 Plum Tree, 296 Plum Tree, 304 Plum Tree, and 308 Plum Tree, uh, as well as zero maybe from a sight line <coughs> perspective, but either way. Um, that said, not hearing anything from the public. Any questions or comments from the board? Uh, height to the poll. Is that 45? It's going to be a 45 foot pole. I believe I can double check that. It's either a 45 or a 50. Mm -hmm. It's a 50 footer. So we're actually going to, yeah, that's going to be a 50 footer. And you're you just going to put one pole up? So there's an existing pole there right now. So one side of the regular platform, platform between the two. Across. Yep. For that. That's to support the three phase uh, the distribution. Th three regulators, yeah. So those are, and that's to support what we have in the <coughs> area, the three phase distribution to clean out that voltage so people don't have the, the ups and downs that, that are being caused. Is that on the express circuit that blows across the river? No, I believe I believe it's coming down. Comes down it Plum comes, Tree. Yeah, comes down Plum Tree. So that, that's the start of the circuit because where it turns off of, what is that, 116? Or, uh, 47. Sorry, 47. 47. Where it turns off 47, that's like the, that, that's an express feed up to 47. Got the it. customer before that, it turns left on Plum Tree, and then, then it hits all the customers on Plum Tree. So it's on the starting half of the of the uh, circuit, but it's not on the express part. Okay. Does that go north on 47 or south from there? Uh, so it comes, so if you're if you're standing on 47, the feed yeah. comes up 47 to Plum Tree and takes a left. So the substation okay. is south of Plum Tree, okay. gotcha. heading back towards the uh, Hadley. Yeah, over, okay. So for people who are, who are watching uh, and for people who will ask questions about this, this construction that goes on, there is an example of this kind of infrastructure on Hadley Road. Yes, and down and that's farther just, down. Just, just uh, north of... Uh, Thomas like, Farm. Uh, or just south of South of Thomas Farm. Farm, exactly right. And you'll see what looks like two poles adjacent to each other within maybe a third of this room's width. And then uh, some large, large um, buckets up on top, cans up on top. Another one, one sixteen. Yep. Yep. Exactly right. Yeah, like if you're heading north up there towards the apartments. Right there, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Any other questions, concerns? Yeah, we're gonna close the hearing. Yeah. No. So, if we're not hearing anything from the public, we can close the hearing and open up discussion with the board. No discussion, Mr. Chair. It's pretty straightforward. So, okay. yeah. so this is a reliability task that Verizon's asking for. The notice of a petition includes, I'm sorry, that Eversource is asking for. Notice of petition includes Verizon because of the uh, proximity of their lines. They may well attach to this infrastructure. Um, not hearing any more discussion of the board. No more questions. All those in favor of granting the application? Aye. 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 Three to zero, please. We'll sign this, Nick, and you guys can, uh, it may already be downstairs. Perfect. I don't think we have any lights on that pole either. That one Not that stretch. Yeah. No. Very good. Thanks Perfect. for Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, questions or comments um, regarding uh, Saturday's election? Well, it's not listed on the agenda as an item, hey, Carolyn. Oh. Um, but I'd like to have some kind of input on that. Uh, the turnout was a little bit lower than last year, but uh, I'd like to thank everybody who did turn out, whichever way you voted. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, it's very important that people turn up and participate in this because it's <clears throat> unlike the federal and state levels, you know, like we were saying, you get a little more participation and you can see things a little more clearly down at this level. So. And when you drive around, you see the results of your tax dollars at work. So, well, uh, Tom? Mr. Mr. Chair, if I could, um, I would just like to remind everybody that that according to most of our elected state senators and representatives, we're in a once in a generational opportunity to affect how uh, school funding is influenced. So, I would strongly suggest that if you um, are, are looking at how 
education is funded, and you should because it's mm -hmm. a large percentage of our budget. Mm -hmm. um, you should become very involved over the next next year and uh, and pay close attention to what's being said at the state level. I just don't. I personally do not feel that it's fair when you get a town like, um, for instance, Conway or Heath or Sunderland, because one or two people move in at and then they look at the equalized valuation and it significantly skews a town's contribution in a very short period of time just because one person moves to town or one family moves to, moves to town um, and, it, and it drastically alters the EQ, EQV of a town. So okay. um, again, I would, I, would, I would hope that our members of the public become involved and are not and are, are inclined to talk about what goes back in the Massachusetts ch Charter that the state provides for unaffordable and available education. Um, and I would say that that, in my opinion, that's where the state's falling right now. They, they, they have this thing they call a foundation budget and I don't think it actually reflects, and it doesn't provide equal and fair education to all the cities and towns in our state. Good point. If, if I could, if I could add to that, uh, in urge to be involved at the state level, adjusting or participating in the discussion around formulaic funding and some of the definitions that are the underpinnings for primary and secondary education funding from the state to the town. I would also um, add that this was largely driven by uh, the slow drip, drip, drip of ex extra uh, of added use of school choice monies coming into the district. And that as a town, as board, as school committee members, as parents, uh, understanding how that drip 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 happens over the course of a decade where we have to have a 10-year reset is something we need to avoid in the future that also includes involvement just like these meetings there's not a poll hearing or a permit right. application or a single concerned citizen a lot of the school committee meetings are not as um, robustly attended so we you know when, when it's a crisis we all show up right. when it's work we're like eh, someone else is doing it right no no yep. so i would suggest that we pay attention to that as well and that's not casting any any aspersions or creating any villains villains or persecutors or rescuers it's just a decade of slow but slow but sure migration we ended up in a spot so let's avoid the spot 10 years from now but the dripping was a good analogy so right. Okay. If there's nothing else, uh, we have a one day liquor license application for the kitchen garden. Carolyn Pam wants to throw a luxurious farm dinner, including <laughs> wine and malt beverage. Hi. What do you think? So, we are planning to serve uh, beer from New City Brewery um, to accompany a lamb roast. Um, Going to do a whole lamb on a spit from Balky Farm. Mm and do a Western Chinese Uyghur uh, menu. Nice. Oh, so, sounds interesting. Yeah. Um, so this is our uh, experiment to see if we have interest in people coming out to the farm for mm -hmm. a, you know, dinner in the field kind of situation. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a collaboration with Little Truck out of East Hampton. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, we are building out our sriracha kitchen on the farm and, you know, wanted to sort of see if there would be interest in having occasional events like these yes. once we have that infrastructure. So doing it as a collaboration to begin with. So this is uh, May 18th? Correct. And it's uh, uh, 6 to 10? Yes. And it's at Silver Lane, 131 yes. Silver Lane. And this is your one chance to plug it shamelessly for a vast audience. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Yeah. So the description, is it tickets online? Is it? Yes. Um, as of tonight, I think we'll have tickets available mm -hmm. um, on, on the Little Truck site. Nice. Um, and I will promote that. So um, looking to about, do about 40 people um, nice. maximum, maybe seating by the greenhouse and nice view of the fields. And um, yeah, an interesting menu that uh, or flavors that you haven't necessarily tasted before. That's great stuff. Sounds intriguing. 
Uh, <clears throat> questions of the board? I'll start. We no. have uh, sign off. We have we have sign off. We have got positive comments uh, from both the Board of Health uh, as well as from the police chief, which are required for our one day liquor licenses. And in the fact that you are doing it yourselves, proof of insurance is not part of that. And it is for profit, and that's your it's your space. You're doing it, and that's a great thing. Okay. You're not a poll petition. That's different. Scott, this time I'd like to make a motion for the uh, to request the uh, one-day li liquor license. Is there a second for granting? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, please. I wish you a great Good luck. success. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. Public comment. Peter, you want to say anything? Yeah. Set. I just maybe that uh, we have one new school committee member elected uh, on Saturday. Uh, That's right. Jessica Corwin is replacing Doug Fulton. Doug <clears throat> served on the board on the school committee for I think nine years now. Wow. Yep. And as as a in a leadership role much of that time, and I think it's he should be uh, certainly be thanked for his efforts uh, in some very trying times. Sure. So that uh, uh, I want to make sure that's acknowledged. And then Jessica is. Um, She's a parent, she's also a teacher in another school district at the elementary level, so she'll bring some knowledge of you know, various aspects of education to uh, the committee, and I think that's great. Good. And she's been a member of the PTO at the school and very active in supporting the school, so. Excellent. We have a, we have a fine replacement. That's wonderful. That's yeah. Tom, David? Um, I, Doug was kind of funny because when he first started, it was right in the, uh, right in the um, <coughs> trial by fire. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it in in Doug actually, if anybody remembers back to when he first gone, he's really he's found his voice over the years. So yeah. that's uh, a great point. So I'm, I'm sure he'll stay involved in a lot of other things. So uh, he was he was talking to me about well, what else in town he might be able to contribute to. Oh, we can find that. And I think that that's, <laughs> oh, right, that's right. something that's that not a problem. lots of people, and I certainly have found that, you know, you, you do a certain amount of time on one thing, and then it's like, well, you know, that turned out to be pretty worthwhile, so what else can we help out with? And I think he's feeling that way, that, sure. you know, he's, he's still, from my perspective, a very young man and has lots of years. He could still be contributing to town in other ways, so. That's a great point. And I would I would echo Peter's point, thanking Doug for his uh, time and uh, effort, energy and effort, and both understanding, you know, elementary school education from a committee member's perspective, administration's perspective, but also the the really difficult um, decade basically that we've been through. Absolutely, I would agree with that 100 <coughs> percent. Keeping yeah. tabs yeah. on the election yeah. Saturday. So thank you, thank you, Peter. Uh, next up, we have minutes of uh, 429. Motion as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero. And lastly for us tonight, we usually do this historically uh, prior to an election, but we're going to close out tonight in executive session, and we're going to go into executive session under uh, Master in the Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21, Paragraph 7, and this is a comply with or act under the authority of any general or special law or federal grant and aid requirements. And in our case, we're only going in specifically to approve or review executive session minutes from the prior year, which there are a total of two. And that's it. We, we don't go into executive session that often. And it's important to clean them up once a year, again, usually prior to an election. Uh, in this case here, uh, we're post, and that's fine, but we're still going to clean them up, and we, they'll be either issued to the public or issued to the attorneys. Either way, again, there are a total of two here. So this is basically housekeeping for members of the board. There'll be no actions taken other than the voting on the minutes. We'll re we will return to open session only to adjourn, and this is a roll call vote. Mr. Bergeron? Aye. 
Mr. Pierce? Aye. Mr. Feitenkevich? Aye. And again, 3-0, we'll Mr. Chair. We'll be coming back out only to adjourn. Really simple housekeeping piece. <laughs>